All right, hey everybody, we're going to implicitly differentiate in notes video D. For our first example, let's consider a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 1. And you can um, see noticeably already different than what we've done in the past is that we are not just dealing with y, y equals a function, we're dealing with now y raised to the second power. So it's a little bit different, and how we handle the derivative is a little bit different too. All right, um, we're still going to be interested in finding rates of change with regard to this circle, uh, finding the slope of the graph, and then being able to write equations of tangent lines. So it becomes important still that we find the derivative of this e equation. Um, to help us a little bit understand um, what we're finding along the way, let's just go ahead and consider a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 1. All right, um, we, we may be interested in finding the rate of change of the graph right here at this point on the graph. Uh, we may be interested in finding the rate of change right here at this point on the graph. Uh, we may be interested in writing the equations of any of those tangent lines to the curve at a particular point. All right, let's go ahead and um, begin to find the derivative. If I'm looking to find dy dx, I just want to kind of point out that notation. If I'm trying to find dy dx, a rate of change of y with respect to x, um, I'm bringing in the derivative operator d over dx. And what you can do is you can put that um, operator in front of all the terms of the equation, uh, and that'd be fine, but uh, just to save some time and some work here, I'm just going to show that I'm bringing it um, into the equation by the brackets, by the use of the brackets. All right, let's find the derivative of each and every term. Derivative of x squared with respect to x, variables agree, simply what we've been doing so far, 2x. All right, uh, and you could, if you wanted to, multiply by the derivative of the inside function, the variable x, with respect to x, but dx over dx would just give 1. Plus, now y squared. If it was just y and we were finding the derivative, then we'd have dy dx. But it's not just y to the first, it's y squared. So how we handle that derivative is, first of all, we notice that y and x don't agree. So in our answer, the derivative for y squared, we are going to have a dy dx factor, if you will. So to find this derivative, proceed normal differentiation rules, power rule, 2y, but we're going to use the chain rule times the derivative of the variable y with respect to x. So that's the result of having variables that dis disagree. And the derivative of 1 is just 0. All right, the math here is just going to have us to solve for dy dx is just going to have us subtract this term, move it to the other side, and then divide out 2y. So I'll have negative 2x over 2y. I subtract and divide, and if I kind of clean it up here, simplify, I'm going to have negative x over y. And so what you might um, real quickly notice is that our derivative now has both x and y in it. So when we implicitly differentiate, that's very possible that your derivative may have just x, it may have just y, or it may have both x and y. All right, so now for us to find the rate of change of this graph, it's important that we have both the coordinates, x and y, or at least we have a way to find both x, to, x and y. Okay, I'm going to use this circle centered at the origin to help us um, uh, locate some rates of change, or find some. All right, let's say I want to evaluate dy dx, um, let's say at the point 0, 1. So I know that's the ordered pair 0, 1. By first looking at 0, 1 and just kind of having an understanding of the graph, the slope of that graph is actually 0. We have a horizontal tangent line. And I just want to uh, verify that through the use of our derivative that we found. All right, so this bar is just an evaluation bar. So dy dx evaluated at 0, 1. This is x. This is y. So using my derivative, it's negative 0 over 1, and that certainly results in 0, uh, and that makes sense with what we're seeing here visually. You, you might be asked, well, what's the equation of that tangent line? Well, it's a horizontal tangent line, 
So likewise, it's going to be y equals, and I'm passing through the point zero 0,1. If this is x and this is y, my horizontal tangent line would be y equals 1. Uh, let's also look at the point negative 1, 0 right here. Negative 1, 0. Um, uh, very obvious that that is a vertical tangent line, so the slope would not exist. So um, through our use of the derivative here, we'll verify that. So we're just kind of practicing new notation, too, with the dy dx, the evaluation bar. Um, down here at the bottom, we usually kind of house the ordered pair, if you will. Uh, and I always just put x and y here. All right, looking back at my derivative, it's opposite x over y. So it looks something like this, cleaning it up. And we certainly know that to be an undefined situation. Uh, and if that's the case, there's no slope, then we know we have a vertical tangent line. And uh, the vertical tangent line then would occur at the x-coordinate. This is x, this is y. Uh, and that equation would be x equals negative 1. Okay, so this example number two, just put right underneath example one. Okay, you may notice that in this equation right here that's implicitly defined that we have one, two, three terms, all of which have a factor of y. So I'm a little suspicious about that, and you should be too. When you look at this, you should be thinking, when I differentiate this equation with respect to x, because I have three terms all with a y factor in it, okay, when I implicitly differentiate, I'm going to get three terms that have dy dx in them, three terms that have the rate of change of, x, uh, rate of, change of y with respect to x. Okay, so applying the derivative operator to all terms, starting here, um, notice that the variables do not agree. So the first thing we want to do is pay attention to that. Um, and then we're going to um, differentiate using the chain rule. So the outside function is the power function 3y squared times the derivative with respect to x of the variable y, which is our inside function. Okay, minus, okay, looking at this term right here, the derivative, okay, when the variables don't agree, using the power rule, 2y times the derivative with respect to x of the inside variable function y. Okay, applying the derivative operator to the third term, there's several ways that you can find the derivative of this term. I, for me, the easiest way is to note that this is just a constant multiplier on y, so it's minus 5 times the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, and then we're proceeding here, we're going to get minus 2x and then equals, and again, these variables agree on these term, this term with this derivative operator, so um, we don't have a rate of change there. I mean, we do, it's dx, dx, but that just equals 1. Okay, and the derivative of any constant with respect to any variable is 0. All right, so at this point, kind of getting our plan together, uh, again, our objective is to find dy, dx. Uh, and to find dy dx, well, I found it. I found it three times, as a matter of fact. I have three terms, all of which have a factor of dy dx. Uh, so I want to isolate. I want to isolate uh, dy dx. Well, it's present in three terms. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to identify all the terms that have y prime in them. Y prime just being another way to say dy dx. Okay, so I've identified them, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, leave them on the left-hand side of the equation, and I'm going to um, move over any terms that do not have that common factor in it to the other side. Uh, and the whole purpose of doing that, if you kind of think ahead, is that once you've established that all these terms have a common factor, well, then we're just going to divide out that common factor. And then going back through the terms and removing that common factor results in, in this factorization. Okay. And as a final step here to solve for dy dx, I'll just divide uh, into the 2x uh, that which I factored out here.
Okay, so that's the derivative of um, this equation right here. And notice that this derivative is a, is, has a combination of both x and y. So if you were to find the rate of change at a particular point on this graph, um, you would have to know both uh, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, or at least a way to find the x and y-coordinate. Okay, and real quickly before I leave this problem, I just want to look at a graphical representation of what that original equation might look like. This equation right here, when graphed, it's pretty interesting. Okay. Kind of looks like a vase. Kind of bows out here. Okay, and it's symm symmetric right here. Ooh, not bad. Um, so this equation right here, when graph, would produce this type of graph right here. Um, and again, even though it's not a function, uh, we're still interested in perhaps the rate of change of this graph at different locations. For example, uh, I don't know what this ordered pair is right here that I'm, I'm looking at, but if I wanted to find the rate of change there, um, I would need to know the derivative. So that's why it becomes necessary um, to implicitly differentiate. So I'm just making up an ordered pair perhaps that, you know, this point um, would be maybe it's negative 3, negative 2. Well, if this is negative 3, negative 2, then I'm putting the x-coordinate and the y-coordinates in here, uh, and I'd be able to calculate the rate of change. Okay, so just wanted to put a little graph to what we were doing just to kind of make sense of it. Okay, all right, we're going to move on to example 3, and I know it's going to look a little bit different. I've had to splice some things together, so thanks for your patience. All right, as you guys can see, we're going to find the slope of x squared plus 4y squared equals 4 at square root of 2 and negative 1 divided by square root of 2. So we're supposed, to, we're supposed to find the slope of this equation right here, this graph, whatever it is. Well, it's not a function. As best I can, I'm going to come over here and try and draw what that would look like. It's actually um, an ellipse. Because vertices at negative 2 and 2. Okay, so as best I can, just kind of an illustration of an ellipse here. Okay. All right, so just a visual to kind of help keep us on, on point through our work. So let's find the slope of this graph at square root of 2, negative 1 over square root of 2. Well, um, if this is x and this is y, I know that I'm going to move right square root of 2 and down some amount. So it must be that I'm somewhere over here. Um, just to get an idea of what my answer should look like when I'm finished, um, what kind of slope I should have. It appears that the ellipse is increasing back to the x-axis, so I would say that the slope here of the graph, okay, which is the same as the slope of the tangent line, okay, is, a, is a positive number. Okay. All right, um, if I had an eraser, I'd erase this. I just, I don't think I have that tool. I'm sure it's somewhere. All right, um, so let's find the slope of this curve at that point. Well, the first thing we have to do is find the derivative. So I'm going to bring in d over dx. It will be really clear to you um, what derivative operator, what variable to put down here. Um, so when you're asked to find dy over dx, um, that in context tells you what the operator is. All right, we just have one term with the variable y in it, and so it looks like we're only going to have one dy dx term, so that makes our work a little bit easier. All right, the der derivative of the first term is 2x plus, okay, here the derivative of 4y squared would be 8y times, using chain rule, the derivative of y with respect to x, and then the derivative of 4 is 0. Uh, so um, what we're going to do here is um, I'm going to isolate dy dx. I'm going to subtract 2x and divide by 8y. Um, it's certainly not necessary for you to isolate dy dx in this context because all you're being asked to do is find the slope of the graph at that point. So if you wanted to plug the x value in first and the y value in first uh, and then work with numbers to solve for dy dx, it's your choice. All right, so for dy dx, I'm going to subtract, it's part of this term, it's a factor of this term, so I have to subtract 2x and then divide by 8y. And a little cleanup is going to give us negative x over 4y. So our derivative involves us knowing both the x and y coordinates, but that's not a problem because it was given to us. Okay, so continue practicing some new notation, uh, and that would be the evaluation bar. Down at the bottom, we usually house the, put the 
point we're working with. Okay, so this is x, this is y. So the evaluation is equal to the opposite of x over 4 times the y coordinate, which is negative 1 over the square root of 2. So just a little cleanup here. I'll work a little bit to the right and then down. Uh, it, it appears that the answer is going to be positive, which we thought it should be, uh, so I can kind of ignore those right now. Uh, we're going to have square root of 2 over, well, it looks like 4 over the square root of 2. And uh, however you're comfortable in simplifying that, I just like to multiply by the reciprocal, so I'll bring that up. Multiply by the square root of 2 over 4, and of course this is over 1. So it appears I'm going to have square root of 4, which is 2, 2 over 4. So it makes sense here. We have a slope of 1 half, positive 1 half, and the graph is increasing, so our slope should be a half. If I wanted to take this further and write the equation of that tangent line I drew in there, it's easy as just doing point slope using the ordered pair they gave you and then dumping in the slope that we found. So not very friendly looking, but um, we don't have to simplify it or anything. So we're done.